there are many people who hate the electric car. Generally, they're faster, quieter and smoother. But there's no shortage of people in Great Britain who absolutely despise them. Why though? Well, some reasons are more obvious than others. Let's kick off with an obvious one, charging. The range electric vehicles have these days is generally enough for most people's needs. But worrying about where to charge them up when needed, that's the problem. The charging infrastructure in Great Britain at the moment is well below where it needs to be for mass adoption of electric vehicles. Also, if you want to rapid charge your electric car, it's generally gonna cost you more than filling up with petrol. An example, my other half drives a Toyota Corolla hybrid and over her last three full tanks of fuel with fuel prices at £1.45 per litre, this is July 2023, I worked out on average it cost her just under 11 pence per mile in petrol. Rapid charges though are priced from between 60p per kilowatt hour to 79p. So let's go for the middle, 70 pence per kilowatt hour. If your car does 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, that's 20 pence per mile. 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour is fairly typical for an electric car, but if you have a really efficient one and you drive very carefully, you may be able to eke out five miles per kilowatt hour. Unlikely, but it is possible. If that's the case, then it's still 14 pence per mile. What was that? I can hear people typing in the comments. They charge up their electric vehicle overnight on a cheap energy tariff. 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour on your overnight rate, that's cheap as chips. Two to three pence per mile. Trouble is though, I think for some people, that's one of the reasons why they don't like electric cars. I'll explain. Lloyds Bank research suggests that 56% of British homes can support an electric charging point for a car. That means 44% can't. So if you live in a property that can't support an electric charging point for a car, you have the future prospect of having to drive around looking for street side charging points. Failing that, you're gonna to have to make your way to a rapid charging station to charge a car and pay through the nose. Meanwhile, someone with a house and a driveway and a home charging point gets more convenience and they pay less to charge their vehicle. You can start to see why some people feel that they're being left behind when it comes to the adoption of electric cars or pretty much the forced adoption of electric cars by banning the sale of new petrol and diesel cars and why they feel like the electric car isn't a product that has them in mind. Something else that may cause some dislike towards the electric vehicle is the way it can be seen as the executioner of the piston powered vehicle. In 2030, in the United Kingdom, there's gonna be a ban on the sale of all new petrol and diesel cars. And if it wasn't for the advances in battery technology, making electric vehicles a viable alternative to petrol and diesel powered vehicles, we probably wouldn't be talking about this ban. So you can start to see why people who love their petrol or diesel manual cars, or even automatic cars, aren't so fond of the EV alternative. I have to say and admit, I find it's a bit of a shame that I don't have a lightweight manual petrol sports car of the future to look forward to. There's probably not going to be another one. And if there is, it's probably gonna be in limited numbers and incredibly expensive. Another reason why some people don't like electric cars is that they're pushed as this green machine, a solution to a problem, but actually they're not that green. I made a video recently where I compared a very efficient petrol hybrid car that doesn't need plugging in with an equivalent sized electric vehicle. I'll leave a link up there. The comparison included the CO2 produced from manufacturing the vehicles. And the electric car still produced 80% of the emissions, CO2 emissions of the petrol electric car. So if you drive an electric car and you claim that you don't pollute, that's like smoking 20 cigarettes a day and saying that you don't smoke because you have a friend who smokes 25 a day. Now, yes, you do smoke less and you may even hide when you're doing it in the same way the electric car hides its emissions, but you still smoke. Another reason is the cost. 
Some people feel like they're being priced out of the market, or at least the new car market. A new Fiat 500 petrol will cost you between 14 and 17,000 pounds. You could pick one up for about that, depending on what spec you went for. If you wanted the new electric version of the Fiat 500 though, the Fiat 500e, well, you're talking 27 to 35,000 pounds for a Fiat 500. Here's one I didn't think of, wheelchair access. I've never had to charge an electric car from a wheelchair before, but apparently there's not many accessible electric charging points around. So if you can't charge from home and you need to use a wheelchair, well, it could be difficult. What concerns me, and I'm not against electric cars, but what I'm worried about is what's gonna happen when people stop paying for fuel and therefore stop paying fuel duty. The government are going to want that money. The motorist is a cash cow, which means the money taken from the motorist in terms of tax doesn't get put back into the road. Some of it does, but some of it goes elsewhere. The motorist pays for other things. So the government are going to want to continue to collect that tax revenue. I can see a pay per mile system on the horizon and that's gonna cost more than fuel duty and we're not gonna get a discount for charging the electric vehicles, which is already more expensive. So we're talking more money here. The system will cost a lot to run. It's gonna need so many cameras. I mean, so, I can't even think of how many cameras that would require and an army of staff to run it. And Big Brother are going to be watching your every move, which kind of sounds like the plot to a Black Mirror episode. And if you're not familiar with what Black Mirror is as a TV series, and let's say the plot doesn't, really work out for the people in it. Some people don't like electric cars because of the noise, or should I say the lack of it. They miss the sound of their petrol engine. And to make matters worse, sometimes electric vehicles make some kind of synthesized noise, and well, it's never as good when it's fake. Another concern I often hear about electric cars is the battery when it catches fire. There's not a lot you can do. You can only try and make the surrounding safe. And whatever you do, don't breathe in what's coming out of that fire. Fortunately, this is a rare occurrence. But when it does happen, it's dangerous. Mining, mining the materials that go into the batteries of electric vehicles can be dangerous work and can involve child labor. Doesn't need to, but that is the reality at the moment. And some people don't want to buy electric cars because they don't want to support that industry. Here are some reasons why people hate electric cars that aren't really true. Recycling. Some people believe that you can't recycle electric car batteries, but that's not true, you can. In fact, the materials inside the battery are so valuable, it would be a bad idea not to recycle them. It's good business. It's a big industry, a fast growing industry, and you can extract over 90% of the metals out of the battery and reuse them. And that should get better as time goes on. As for the rest of the car, well, that's gonna be similar to recycling a petrol or diesel car. If someone buys a new electric car and then doesn't drive long enough to make up for the extra CO2 in the manufacturing of that car, they're actually producing more CO2 than buying a new petrol car. That's not true, because how much CO2 a car produces should be looked at over its entire lifespan, manufacturing and use, including recycling, not just how much CO2 is produced by the first owner and putting all of the manufacturing CO2 on the first owner. Every owner is gonna get use out of that car. So the manufacturing CO2 should be spread out over the whole life of the car. Also, as manufacturers make progress with their cars, make them more efficient, and also progress in the manufacturing and recycling of the cars, the car will get greener. So cars that we're gonna be driving in 20 years should be producing significantly less CO2 than the cars we're producing now. And the grid's gonna be getting greener as well. So that is actually a positive for the electric car. Not only is, are they greener at the moment, but as more time goes on, the electric grid in Great Britain is producing less CO2. An idea is to stop buying new cars. Just keep the existing cars on the road for as long as possible. And in the short term, that works. But I think we should be 
thinking long term. If we stop buying new cars, car manufacturers have no budget. They have no reason to develop new technology, meaning we get stuck in the same place. And you can apply that same idea to an electric car. Buy the electric car and keep that as long as possible. The longer the electric car is on the road, the less CO2 it produces per mile. And the further we go into the future, the less CO2 is produced from generating electricity in this country. That is where we're heading at the moment. Whereas the petrol and diesel car will continue to emit more or less the same CO2. I'll talk about synthetic fuels soon. Some people say that electric cars over their lifetime, when you consider manufacturing as well, produce more CO2 than an equivalent petrol or diesel car. Now that may be true in some countries, but it's not true in Great Britain. When I did my little test and I compared a very efficient petrol hybrid with an electric car, in Great Britain, considering the average life expectancy of a car in Great Britain and how much CO2 is produced from electricity generation, the electric car produced 80% of the CO2 of the petrol hybrid. So it wasn't no CO2 and it was still actually quite a bit, 80% of the CO2, but it was less. That may be different in different countries though. Something you used to hear quite a bit, but you don't tend to hear it these days, although it does crop up every now and again. Electric cars have no power. Try a modern electric car. It will knock your wig off. So they are some of the reasons why some people hate electric cars. If I've missed any out, let me know in the comments why you may hate them. In my opinion, I think on the whole, as time goes on, they're going to be good. They may not be green yet, but they're greener. It depends where you charge them, but they have the potential to be greener. But more importantly, as time goes on, they have the potential to produce even less CO2. As electricity production gets cleaner and the production of the cars gets better and the recycling and the responsible mining practices, Electric cars could be the saviour to personal transport, allowing us to maintain the option of being able to drive our own personal car, if we wish, sustainably and responsibly. I think the 2030 ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars in the United Kingdom generates some hate towards the electric car because people don't like being told what they can and cannot buy. If the government want to reduce emissions, set the goals and then let the engineer come up with the solution to those goals. It may well be an electric car, but it might be something else. It might be something that uses fuel, but for the time being, in our current era, works out that it produces less CO2 over its lifetime. During this video, I'm sure some people have been screaming at their screens and writing in the comments that hydrogen and synthetic fuels are the answer. They are the solution and they may well be, but they have a big problem. Green hydrogen and carbon neutral synthetic fuel take a lot of green energy to produce. So for every mile that you drive, you're gonna need a lot more green electricity. That makes them more expensive. Charging an electric battery in a car is cheaper significantly. Now, some people are happy to pay the extra to have the hydrogen or the synthetic fuel, and that's why I think the government should just set the CO2 standard and let the market forces do their work. And things in the future may change. Maybe synthetic fuels and hydrogen become cheap. Maybe we have so much green energy, so much renewable energy, but the problem is we don't know how to store it. So we store it as hydrogen and synthetic fuel but I'm not sure if that would ever happen because what business decides to produce way more green electricity than they need? They wanna try and balance supply with demand. Well, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, then Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy. And that takes away a big stress from the owner of that car. Via the link at the moment, there's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. 
If you want to insure your own car, I recommend checking out the link to Confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from many insurers to compare who's cheapest. And you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like without having to redo the whole quote. You just change the car and recalculate. So it's a quick and easy way to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.